So good morning to you folks. Hey, we haven't been here for a while, so this is Wednesday, I think September 23 or something like that. Uh, it's been a month or so since I've recorded a couple of COVID moments, and uh, we're going to, Josh and I are going to do two of them here for you today. Um, they'll have relevance, as we always do. We take something from the COVID world and tie it in with God's promises which we totally always rely on. So lately, uh, some of the headlines and the questions that uh, I have heard and concerning coronavirus and the pandemic, and one that is finding its place in some of the latest headlines is, is coronavirus a sign of the end times? Now, one of the articles I read was one that was this question was on lots of people's minds. Uh, someone made the comment in one of the articles uh, that went something like, could this look like the end of the world? To which someone else responded with, I don't know if it's the end of the world or not, but I think you can start to see it from here. True. I think it would be fair to say that's how many people are presently feeling. Um, my observation, probably yours is too, it's not just Christians asking these kinds of questions. Even folks who aren't Christians, even folks who really aren't expecting Christ to return again, are kind of taking a doomsday approach to this coronavirus thing, and as long as we've been struggling with it, we kind of understand that, don't we? And maybe it's all in good rationale. COVID-19 spread over this world months back. In a matter of weeks, it resulted in death counts rising, mass shortages of food and other supplies, and the complete shutdown of many services and basic businesses. That before all this, well, they were so readily available to us. Many of our major cities, you know this, are in turmoil. They're being overrun, set on fire, looted, and just some communities just aren't safe anymore. Things are so unstable that about a month or so ago, President Trump announced plans to mobilize U.S. military in response to violent protests and to stop the violence and to restore safety and security in cities across the country. He also recommended here at one point a couple of months ago that every governor ought to deploy the National Guard. Huh, I wonder what martial law would look like in this country. We are also being indoctrinated with ideas that the government should have more control of our daily lives in turn will be provided with free housing and med medical care and employment. Drugs are being legalized, gun rights restricted, the inalienable rights and freedoms that generations have fought and died for are in jeopardy. Of course, they always are. Through it all, our churches are struggling. Many are being vandalized, burned down. Christians really do fear more persecution. Uh, a picture of President Trump holding the Bible was perceived by many as blasphemy. Ah, uh, yes, the Bible. The scriptures do predict events that will shake and shatter the foundations of the world before the end times do happen. And the Bible certainly urges us to take note and pay attention to those events. And we do, especially when there is a worldwide crisis, because all this does lead up to the final events that will take place when Jesus does come again. And among these future crises and catastrophes, well, the Bible says there will be pestilence, plagues, and pandemics like coronavirus. Yes, we are certainly living in very uncertain times. Yes, we are certainly living in the end times. And as this old world seemingly grinds to a halt amidst uh, this COVID-19 pandemic, all kinds of questions about the future are being asked. 
You know, one I always have is how can such a tiny little virus bring so much upheaval and distress? So Ken Ham, founder of Answers in Genesis, he's one of my heroes, notes in one of his articles that back in the mid-1300s, many faced a bacterial plague and we refer to it as the Black Death. We can't be certain of the death toll, but estimates are that half of the population of Europe died in less than a decade. It was a pandemic that began in Asia and it brought its blackness to the West as well and death started and there was all kinds of destruction and chaos with that as well. So the question back then is the same as it is now. Is there any similarity to the book of Revelation and the plagues that are mentioned there. We Christians are certain that as we prepare for the second coming of Jesus, we just have to do so dealing with this kind of sinful effects in a sinful world. Here's how Paul writes something about that in Romans 8. He says, all of creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed because all of creation was subjected to this kind of frustration. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up into the present time. Man, do we ever feel that groaning welling up inside of us when all kinds of trials and struggles start to happen. We not only see it, we feel what Paul is talking about. We feel this kind of frustration. We feel it in this present pandemic. Along with the headlines about COVID-19, there was this, if you remember, about the time COVID hit, also did a earthquake this past March in Salt Lake City. It registered uh, almost six, I think it was 5.7 or eight uh, on, on a magnitude scale. I've read articles about people who fear killer hornets and other events like that just keep us focused on the end times. Not to mention, as of late, it's hurricane season as well. And Jesus gave us a heads up on all this. He said that those kinds of things serve the purpose of reminding us that this world's a mess and the only way it's really going to end is when Christ comes again when he says, there will be wars and rumors of wars and nation will rise against nation and famines and pestilence will happen in various places. And so will fearful signs and great signs from the heaven. Not only are these signs of the end times, but the Bible also mentions the persecution of churches and Christians. And the Bible, we believe, says that this persecution is going to intensify towards the end. There will also be a sign of the end times with lots of apostasy, and that's many falling away from the faith. Definite signs that the end times are approaching. I tell people we have been and will continue to be in the end times since Christ ascended back into heaven some 2,000 years ago. Is COVID-19 a sign of the end times? Well, yes. But so is every disease, earthquake, war, power struggle. God only knows when he plans to bring about the consummation of all this and the end to all this and when Christ will come again. But we have our faith in Jesus and we trust that God does all things perfectly. You want a nice little Psalm verse to help you through all this? Go to Psalm 31 and read verses 14 to 15. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hands. So deliver me from my enemies. Wars rage. Pestilence. Pandemic spread. Famines, floods, tsunamis, and hurricanes happen. All these things are just reminders that we live in a world so corrupted by sin. These events remind us that Jesus is coming again. So rather than trying to guess the specifics of what all these troublesome events seem to indicate, we pray that we trust God. 
We pray that we can look forward to a day when God will be dwelling with his people again. Here's the way Isaiah 65, 17 says it. Behold, I will create a new heaven and a new earth, one that pandemics can't touch, okay? The former things will not be remembered, nor will any of them come to mind. Be glad and rejoice in what I will create, for I will create a new Jerusalem, and it will be a delight and a joy to its people. Revelation 21, verse 1. John writes, I looked and then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, because the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. And I heard a voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and I will live with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, no mourning, no crying, no pain, for the old order of things has passed away. So rather than lose heart and despair over both the brokenness of this world or the signs that point to Jesus coming again, we live with hope. And by faith, we look forward to and we long for that glorious day when Jesus comes again. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, there are so many signs around us that we do recognize to be signs that point us to your return. Even though they make us fearful and challenge our trust and our hope in you, please keep us faithful. We continually pray that though these catastrophes will continue to happen and that they must happen, keep us safe from all harm and danger. Above all, help us to see these end time signs in a positive light, that our God is still in control. Our God knows exactly what he's doing. In you, Jesus, he promises he will, we will not be tempted beyond what our faith can manage and handle. Help us not only to recognize these signs, but they, may they help us to always focus on your second coming. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.